Hello, I'm Leonard Malton, and we're here at the magnificent Walt Disney Feature Animation Research Library. And with me are two of the living legends of animation, Ollie Johnston and Frank Thomas. Can I ask you each, how do you feel about Mickey Mouse? Oh, I have a great affection for him because he meant a lot in my life. Without Mickey, if it had been one of these other characters, Felix or something like that, I don't think it would ever reach the peak that he reached. And uh, has a charm that uh, Walt put into him. And it, I feel that there's so, this close relationship between Walt and Mickey that's been very important in my life. And you, Frank? Yeah, though I always uh, loved the little guy because of the scenes that I got to do with him and the, the fun I had creating him. And that there's a, a feeling you get when you make the drawings and then you send them out the camera and you see the film and suddenly this guy up here is alive. He's as alive as you are and he's doing the things that he's thinking of it himself. Do you remember the first time you saw Mickey Mouse cartoons in theaters long before you worked for Walt? Oh yeah. Yeah, we, they were very popular, particularly with us. But, uh, you know, there were a lot of cartoons prior to Walt's entrance into the field. Well, Felix was the biggest silent yes. star, right? But uh, there was an interesting bit of development there. They drew him with black hands on a black arm against a black body and black feet. And if he said something in here, you know, say, oh, guys, you couldn't see it. And Walt uh, realized that fairly early. Uh, they had, they tried it on him, putting the white gloves on him here, and the white shoes on him, but it had to clear up. And Walt was so strong on getting over the acting ability of the characters and what he wanted them to be doing that uh, he changed the whole feeling of cartoons from then on. So it wasn't action, it was acting yeah. that made the difference. Uh, even in those very first days. Did those cartoons inspire you to want to work in animation? Is it fair to say that? Yeah, I like to see them, and I was happy about it, but it never occurred to me I was going to be working there. Mm -hmm. Same thing with me. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to learn to draw better, mm -hmm. and I eventually came down, went to Chenard, where Frank was going, and uh, that was fun. I was going to be a magazine illustrator, but uh, something happened along the way. Frank went out to Disney's and got hired, and a few weeks later he said, they want me to come out there too. So I did, and uh, I got hooked on it. What year was that? In 1935 with me, you were 34. About six weeks ahead of me. He's always six weeks ahead. <laughs> I'm, I'm an older man. By six weeks? Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, let's, let's look at some of these drawings and tell me what, what strikes you about it. Now, here, here's the first time Mickey was ever drawn, I guess. This is, this is plain crazy. Yeah. Back in 1928. Now, I, I don't know if we're looking at Ub Iwerks' actual drawings here, but chances are we are. They are. He did every drawing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love the stuff he did up in the airplane where... Uh, he wanted to kiss Minnie. And I thought, gee, this is wonderful acting. Uh, Walt must have talked this to them. <laughs> and she no, no, she didn't want to do it. <laughs> so he finally grabs her and kisses her, and she jumps out of the airplane. Oh, yes, yes, and her, pa her panties. Yeah, her and her parachute. parachute. <laughs> but that was a wonderful little section to me. Mm -hmm. I thought it was way, way advanced over anything else in the picture. Ub laid the groundwork for so much of animation that other people built on. Is there something about his drawing that's distinctive? I mean, when you look at it, do you see something that stands out to you? Well, I think they're all very clearly staged and very simple action. They're very simple and easy to read. And they get the point across. They get the point across, mm -hmm. absolutely. This is sort of strange drawing on the arms and the legs are just strings. 
<laughs> but he was moving fast, shooting back yeah. and forth. Yeah. Is that what they call rubber hose animation sometimes? That kind of... I would. Those <laughs> limbs? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There are an awful lot of uh, stiff things in the early action, but uh, Ub knew how to handle it somehow so that he could do something that was strong by being stiff. Here's two sets from Steamboat Willie. And that's Mickey. I mean, there he is right there. I mean, it's early and it's simple, but that drawing has personality, doesn't it? Uh -huh. Sure. And that's just one frame, but it's there. That always astonishes me. There's life in, in a single drawing like yeah. that. He was working against uh, uh, several problems here. They tried to have the head a circle and the body a circle mm -hmm. and connected by just two lines there, a very short distance. And they couldn't get any body expressions, any acting on the body to go over or come off, hey, look what I'm doing or anything. He was always just stuck here between the round bottom and the round top. Yeah, the way he came around here uh, and around here and then fit into this circle down below, you couldn't tell to take the head off. You can't tell what he's doing. Looks like he ate a big lunch. So what you mean is that part of what acting comes out of what we call body language, right? Yeah. And if there's no body, you can't have body language. You got it. A lot of people have theorized that that circular idea has a subliminal effect on people. There's something simple and basic and almost primal about that circle, the circle head especially. Do you think that's true? Is there something that people find appealing about that kind of design? Yeah, they say if you show the baby a head with these circles on it, and a doll's head over here, they'll take this one. Mm -hmm. Just automatically like that simple shape. Well, Walt used to talk about that. He yeah. says, there must be something about this little guy. Don't, don't louse it up now. At one point, they were leaving off the tail because they didn't like, he doesn't have to be enough of a mouse. What is he going at? They've got to get more personality in here. Walt spotted it immediately. What happened to his tail? What are you guys doing here? <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember, was there a lot of discussion about him being a mouse? He was so much a person. It was almost an afterthought, it seems, that he was a mouse. Did you think of him as a mouse? No, we never tried to draw, to animate him like a mouse. We never put him on all fours, mm -hmm. even if a mouse could run on his hind leg. Uh, we used a different type of animation for it, so it was more believable. Let's talk a little about Walt being Mickey's alter ego. It's been said many times, and. Walt's widow, Lillian, was heard to say after Walt died that it was very hard for her to ever look at Mickey Mouse because he reminded her so much of her husband. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, somehow he felt he created the character even though Ub drew the stuff. Mm -hmm. Walt was the guy that okayed it all the time that I was there before we got into things like Snow White. I always thought of Walt was being part of Mickey and vice versa. The ideas that he put into Mickey were so important and, and made the personality. Did you ever watch him at a recording session? Did you ever watch him perform as Mickey? Well, you did. Mm -hmm. for, was that for the pointer? Pointer, yeah. mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Well, in the, in the story meetings that they were having, and the animator usually didn't come in until the very end of this. He was so funny when he would act it out, and you could tell that as a kid, under 12, he would have been lying in bed, you know, thinking away, and if a bear came up to me, what would I say to him? And uh, he was so funny, we asked him, can we put a camera on you? Well, well, hell no, gee, what are you doing? You know, just, <laughs> no. Well, he came in the next day and he had this funny old hat that he wore whenever it was raining, and it was all bent down and dripping. And uh, still, as he started to say these lines, he couldn't hold himself back. And he did all these same things. Oh, oh, oh gestures along with it. Uh, he did the whole thing. He was a wonderful actor. He'd get up and act something out in the picture that you wanted. Jungle Book, he did a lot of good stuff for us. It's just a natural actor. Uh, but he had to be in the right mood to do it. Mm -hmm. Let's look at some more advanced drawings then. 
Now this is from the birthday party. Where they're really getting getting the characters better established as, as, as look, we... Look at the way the legs are drawn. <laughs> and the shoes. So in other words, if you were teaching somebody how to draw and how to animate, this would be how not to do it. Yeah, I would say for that period, it, it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. But to, for today, it, you'd think they were kidding if they drew it this way. And yet if you watch the finished sequence, as you say, it works. So you, you look at a drawing, can you tell, is it like a fingerprint? Can you tell whose mark is on that drawing? Uh, on certain ones, yeah, I couldn't tell like on this, I, whether there are four or five different guys there that could have done it. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be able to recognize it because I never worked with them or mm -hmm. with their drawings. But anything that Freddie Moore did, I was his assistant for mm -hmm. quite a while. Yeah, I could spot them a mile off. I could spot anything Fergie did and anything that Ham Lusk did. Uh, they were different. So for people who don't understand this, now everyone, all the animators would work from a model sheet, right? And everybody was supposed to be drawing Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse exactly the same way. But in spite of that, each person had his own special technique or personality in the drawing? We were all trying to do something that expressed the inner feelings of the character for that particular thing and how it related to other characters. And so you couldn't help but draw it a different way. And yet what's fascinating to somebody who is a layman, who doesn't have a skilled eye that way, it's seamless. Yeah. There's no difference in the drawing style from the beginning of a Mickey Mouse cartoon to the end. And there could have been six or eight people, 12 people working on it, but I would never know by looking at it, but you guys would. Yeah. yeah. Ollie, do you remember the first Mickey Mouse cartoon you worked on? How could I forget? Brave Little Taylor. A uh, great one. I drew him looking out the window, I think. But mainly I drew stuff where he was on the giant. And not too many scenes, but some there where he was about to get swallowed and stuff like that. I thought, boy, this is, this is great stuff here. And <laughs> I'm getting real personality into this. But actually, it was a pretty primitive. Oh, it's still a great cartoon. The Brave yeah, Little Taylor yeah. is still one of the best. Yeah, very good. And you did the scene where he's describing killing seven in one blow? Yeah. And Fred's most, almost his most famous scene is where he walks out after he's agreed to, to kill the guy. And he says, uh, uh, I'll be seeing you, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really great little drawings. Now, this is a cartoon that you actually worked on, Frank, when you were assisting Art Babbitt. Now, this is Two Gun Mickey. You handled these drawings almost 70 years ago, strange as that may seem. Sorry, <laughs> Mickey. <I'm> old. Sorry. <laughs> That's pretty good Mickey, though, you know. Yeah. Now, what, now, what was it like to be an, were you an in-betweener or an assistant? What was your position at that No, time? I was only a, an in-betweener on this picture. And so, so what did that mean? Art Babbitt would be animating a scene of Mickey. Mm -hmm. And if an action took 50 drawings, how many would he do? How many would you do? It depended on how mad he was at me. <laughs> <laughs> Art would do this one and this one and maybe parcel part of one of these in here because the hand comes around. Mm -hmm. And then he'd hand me the scene and say, do the rest of them in there now. Could, could bad in between spoil a good, a good scene? Oh, yeah. Make it jerky. Mm -hmm. I only had one scene, fortunately, in all my years there that I had to reanimate because the cleanup man misinterpreted everything and drew it in a different style and thinking a different way. He always thought a different way than I did. And he just ruined it. There's nothing I could save out of it. Wow. That happened to me, too, but for a different reason. Somebody took my scene home to uh, put all in-betweens in, everything, and put it on the top of her car as she was going to load her stuff in the car to go home. And uh, guess what? <laughs> Fell down and sprinkled all over the street. <laughs> now, collectors tend to collect animation art and like the cells. But for you guys, it's the drawings that really matter most, isn't it? Yeah, I prefer a 
tight the drawing to a cell because you lose a little, it's a tracing. When you see these pencil drawings, when you look at these now, uh, is there kind of a unique connection with the artist that, that maybe doesn't exist in the finished product? Well, you think, you think uh, of the women, the, all the work they had to do with the ink and the paint, and I think, gee, how can they trace that so accurately on there? And I respected the work that they did, and the layout man who created the background for a thing and how you staged the character so that that was important. And uh, the animator didn't necessarily follow that. This layout man would just scream, he didn't follow my drawing. <laughs> but other than that, you, uh, I don't know. We like the drawings because that's what we like to do. Yeah. And I get that all the time from people today under the computers. And uh, they say, well, they can do awful good work on the computers, and it's a lot easier, but it takes a little longer, and it's a little more expensive, and it's crueler. But I like to just sit down there with the character and know what he's doing and draw him. There's something you feel about the, your pencil in your hand. And boy, you can just forget the rest of the world. You're down there in this little dream world drawing away on the thing. Okay, final, final question. One word to describe Mickey Mouse. What's the first word that comes to mind to describe Mickey Mouse? I think I'd say appealing. Mm -hmm. There was something about him that just drew people in from the little, as you said, those little tops. Uh, couldn't even talk yet, and yet they'd say, yeah, I'm digging, and reach for him. He has to have appeal, and even when he was acting seriously, in, in, uh, he had a very definite personality. A lot of people have said, well, he can do anything. You know, he can be a cowboy, he can be a dancer, he can be a musician, he can be a mountain climber. It can be anything. Would you choose the same word or a different word? Uh, well, I'd certainly say it was appealing, but also inspiring. It was inspiring to me the fact that uh, he did so much for the medium. What he did, uh, gee, I, I love saying I'm working for Mickey Mouse, <laughs> and uh, that meant for Walt and Mickey Mouse. And to me, he was an inspiration and something I loved. And uh, every time I'd make a drawing for somebody, why, uh, a Mickey, I felt, oh, geez, I've done them. I'm a big favor. That's true. It's true. Thanks so much.